Kilsey Scale Modeler, JC. Glad to have your company once again. Hey, a huge shout out to everybody that's hit the like and subscribe and bell notification. Really do appreciate it. But more than that, folks, I really do appreciate all the wonderful messages on Instagram asking how I am, how everything's going. Um, and I do apologise, guys. I normally, for those of you regularly, you know I post on Sunday nights for pity new people. Uh, Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, due to the uh, nasty lumps I've got going on in the body, I wasn't able to use my left leg. I was good at walking in circles, but yeah, not much good besides pain. And uh, yeah, so I slowly eased up a bit and um, I got used a bit of it. So that's just great. So I'm back up in the shed here and uh, let this, let's get this party started. Again, hit the like, subscribe. Thanks a heaps and the bell notification. Okay, guys, well, in this episode, um, we've got the winner, or the draw, um, for the um, 57 Chef Bel Air. Now, I've recorded it on the phone um, live, so you guys will see who's won that, and wait right to the end to see if you are the person who has won it. In this episode also, We've got Mr. Jürgen Engel and part of Jürgen Station, the new uh, little video for the trainees out there that really want to see a master craftsman at work. Uh, Jürgen, thank you so much for your time, mate. So, folks, before we move on to that, like normally we switch straight to that um, interview with Jürgen, but uh, Braden um, passed, came up here last week. And oh, then we'll just move that... Um, Beautiful 57 shirt, who's going to be winning that? We'll find out at the end of this episode. Along with our little $50 outlaw page voucher. Oh, guys, look, quick before I move on to what Braden brought me, go to YouTube, um, type in 16th annual 24 hour build, I'm sorry, on, on Facebook. Um, I'm building that this weekend. Um, and put your entry in. You've got 24 hours to build a model. It um, starts at in Australia at 12 o'clock uh, on Saturday and afternoon and finishes 12 o'clock Sunday afternoon. So this kit will be built 24 hours. That's painted, ready to rock and roll. Okay, I'll just move that out of the way. The Mighty Outlaw Paints and Braden and his lovely wife Mel came up and uh, delivered me this beautiful box of uh, paint. Um, I've already had a peek as I do. Now there's a couple of colours I can show you guys. Um, and I'll put them on spoons next week. So this one here is the Team Escar X-Star Silver. It's a, you've got a little bike on it there. Uh, motorbike forks, if you're into those, or gold. It's a really great little gold colour. And this would have to be my favourite colour so far. It is a bike colour, but hey. You can put it on car. Team X Star Blue. Now, I'm talking to Braden. If I lay that blue over that um, silver there, you will get the. Uh, what is it? Red Bull. And I think it's roughly the anodized color of the Red Bull can. So I'll be experimenting with that. We'll throw that on a few spoons. And we'll. There's. I don't know if you can see that, guys. Hang on, let me move up. Yeah, hang on. I don't want to, don't want to tip them out. All those. Now the green dots are what I can't share, and the other ones are a heap of rail colours. And yeah, I'll do a lot of spoons um, in in rela relation to Jurgen's station because uh, Jurgen does use Outlaw Paints. So make sure you visit Braden at www.outlawpaints.com.au. Wednesday we've got the a few things happening there, but anyway, we'll get on to Jurgen's um, interview. And again, thank you very much. And then we'll move on to the first ever Jürgen's station. It's just a few hints and tips from Jürgen, and he is a master at what he does. So, without further ado, people, let's roll. Hi, and welcome to Aussie Scar Modeler. I have the one and only man himself, Mr. Jürgen Engel. How are you, buddy? Hello. Mate, looking trim, taut and terrific there. Thank you. Hey, uh, mate, uh, thanks for really uh, taking the time and... Uh, appearing on the uh, channel it really means a heap as you know and you, you, we've discussed it i don't i'm not much i don't have a lot of knowledge on trains pretty much bugger all but um in the modeling train world your name pops up quite a lot and that's a full credit to you and yet 
that's all the baubles and gongs your way because you know i have seen some of your work and it's just amazing and it's a privilege to be able to share it and with everybody on the channel so thank you very much thank you and thank you for the invitation too oh my my pleasure mate um i was just wondering mate your first recollection of any sort of modeling whether it was trains cars boats planes what got you started and what how old were you hmm. um probably first recollections around four five um six something like that was definitely trains um usually you know you're involved with your family and mum or dad or a family member has a hobby and you tend to follow in their footsteps and for us that was trains um certainly the the first sort of um building i did probably didn't come much after that and i've sort of found my way through that um from there on in i've dabbled in other stuff you know, model aircraft and cars and trucks and tanks and whatever whatever else that goes with it but i've always found myself um going back to the going back to the railways yeah and i suppose like myself i try to cover everything i possibly can i just enjoy building and creating something from absolutely nothing and Definitely. with your with railways and and trains i've noticed you know with all the diorama stuff that goes with it and the electrical stuff that goes with it you know, your LED lighting and all that sort of new stuff that's out and about today. Um, all those skills from model building, they all go back into it. That's right. Model trains, it's a funny sort of animal. Um, there's quite a bit to it. I guess, I guess the first thing about model trains is it's all about making the train go um, versus, say, another hobby like maybe just static plastic building where not much, not much has to happen. Um, with trains, there's motors and there's the gears and electronics and electrics to consider and um, your track and how well you lay your track. And that, of course, dictates how well your trains run and how well your trains are tuned. So that there's quite a, I guess there's quite a bit of um, a hidden side to it as well. And the dark it's, side, it's you sort of thing. <laughs> Sorry? Is it the dark side? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. But there's <laughs> certainly a... Um, there's certainly a, um, I guess, a bit of a, a bit of a curve to getting all those various aspects running together and running smoothly, and, and um, getting your train to run well, which is the whole idea of a model railway to have the, the final result is to have your train running well around the track. Uh, mate, well, hey, my, as I said, my knowledge is limited, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'll, I'll name what they, I think they're called gauges. You've got <laughs> O, H O. Double O and N gauge is that? Is there more than that? Oh, there's a lot more. You certainly named the um, the main ones. The scale and gauge argument is um is quite a quite an often heatedly debated one. It, the terms are often misused. Um, Model railways did a funny thing. They assigned a letter to the scale, and so instead of saying your model trains are, for example, one to eighty seven, um, they had to be called HO. And the terms are often misused. Um, the, the gauge is nothing more than the reference between the width of the rails uh, and the scale is the actual scale which the model is built and they're quite often to change and I guess over the years uh, marketing and and just how how the names have evolved and how different it's quite interesting how different countries sort of call um, their scales and gauges and different things so yeah it, it can be quite a minefield especially um, especially if you're starting out trying to learn all the different scales and gauges and, and what they mean. Well, mate, I'm glad that you're in the corner because I gave the five-year-old um, grandson his first Hornby, for, well, the wife and I gave him his first Hornby for Christmas. And yeah, as I mean, I remember my first Lima set back when I was about seven years old, the uh, Japanese bullet train, but I was, it was all in the box. I think I played with it once and that was it. It wasn't, wasn't that I wasn't interested. There was just so much as you know, going on in your life as a seven-year-old and everything's amazing. Um, but yeah, I'll be knocking down your door for more hints and tips to be able to help his father help him build this uh, no thing and get it all sorted out. Um, mate, what about your earliest recollection of a hobby store? Well, that, that would almost certainly have to be um, Berg's Hobbies in Parramatta. I would have been, I guess, around that rough age, you know, four, five, six years old. I'd, have a vague recollection of going there with dad. He obviously would have gone there to buy some hobby supplies at the time. So, um, yeah, that's probably my, my first recollection of Berg's hobbies in um, Parramatta, New South Wales. 
Well, yeah, I mean, Parramatta, mate, you've warmed my heart again. It's just every, I mean, the flags are up over there and the calendar's over there. So, yeah, membership keys in my pocket for this year. Hey, um, mate, with um, what you do, and I, I know you're going to not sort of deny it, but you are one of the very revered uh, train builders. I don't know what you would class yourself as, but yeah, people sort of come to you for a lot of advice. And um, so how long's a rough, say a build, what's it normally take? Just for an engine itself. Oh, that, 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 that's, that's quite a long question and I'm probably an unassuming question. <laughs> um, look, looking at a, I don't know, scale locomotive, maybe a, a typical etched brass kit, um, several hundred pieces and everything's sold. It'll depend largely on customer requirements and what they expect and what they need. Um, anywhere up to several months a year wouldn't be uncommon. Wow, mate. Um, there's, there's just so many factors that go into it. Um, if there needs to be some electronics fitted, um, some special lighting. Uh, again, if they may require the engine painted or built as per the real one, and the, the, the information needs to be obtained, the references. So it can vary quite a bit, just depending on exactly what it is. Yeah, I mean, your work, it, just, it is amazing. Speaking of your work, is there any creations you can share with us? Uh, yes, I, if you like, I can quickly switch over to the, work, the workbench camera that sits above the workbench and um, I've probably got a couple of things here I can um, show you. Mate, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Me two seconds. And how's that looking? Uh, mate, I'll just peek over. Yeah, mate, I can see the map there. I'll just uh, tilt my head because I so I can see it on the monitor over there. That'd be great. Yeah, it looks live. Yeah, it's live um, as you come, mate. Nice circle. So a couple of projects I've got sitting to the left of me. Um, as I mentioned just a second ago, um, a lot of kits come in what's known as etched brass or etched nickel silver. It just depends on the manufacturer and how they how they go about their trade. Um, this is a pretty reasonable example of a sheet of etched brass. Um, there's two sheets, this particular locomotive kit, and the locomotive is, let's try and line up under the camera. For the Victorian modelers out there, it's a Victorian Railways T-Class. Okay. Um, so basically this sort of kit, you um, need to cut all the parts out. Um, some parts might need to be punched, and the pieces, the various pieces are, are bent, soldered together, and all fingers crossed at the end of it, you have something that looks like a, a locomotive. Mate, wow, that's incredible. So that, that's that's an example of a kit. That's not necessarily what all locomotive kits might look like, but that's um that's a bit of a start of what they might look like. So mate, that's, uh, that, that is amazing. It's like it's like very thick photo edge. Um th this kit's around uh, 15 or 20 thou brass. Okay. Um, it's pretty common for OSCAR. It might sort of look flimsy at the start, but once you start folding and soldering and, and screwing and bolting the various parts together, it becomes quite a strong assembly. Okay. And what, what sort of uh, motor would power that, mate? Uh, this is a good example of a kit where um, we use what's called a, a donor chassis. Um, yeah. The chassis will come from another model, which just happens to have the right wheelbase and the right wheel diameter and is close enough to get away with. So this particular uh, model does have a, a US model uh, where you can pull it apart and use up the, the motor and the bogies and the chassis. Okay. Now that one. And anything else, mate? Uh, I mean, this, this, this is at the other end of the scale, but I'm going to try and get this all lined up and how I'm going to go. This is an example of a, a built um, locomotive. Wow. Um, so for US prototype, and um, it's currently in for a little bit of love. So um, a new motor and flywheel and gearbox and um, balancing and suspension. Each of these axles are sprung, so they all need to be um, checked. Um, the, the weight gets moved around in the loco, so it balances in centre. I just wonder if we could flip that over the other way. So, oh, yeah, sure. uh, yep, she's right side up, so the... Yeah. Like this? Or no, no, no. That one. Turn around. No, other way. That, um, upside down. 
Yeah, it was upside down. So if you bring it in upside down, it'll be right side up. Like that? No, side profile, mate. So Side profile. Tilt the funnels towards you. I do want to go that way. Yeah, that way, mate. That's the way. So she's right side up and down a bit towards... That's it. Yeah. That is... That's that incredible. Up. And you... And you build that kind of stuff? No. This this is a particular model that um, comes as is. Um, right. They get made in small batches. Um, there are all different types of models, of course, not just this one, but um, that's how they come. And sometimes they come like this um, bare bones brass. Sometimes they come painted. Mate, that's this absolutely... particular model. Is, sorry. Yeah, mate, it's just incredible. That's just amazing. Yeah. I mean, for what it's worth, these brass models are a very sort of specialised end of the model railway hobby for a lot of people. Um, as model railways is a funny thing. There's a, a lot of sub-hobbies within the hobby. Yep. And there's a lot of um, smaller hobbies, little niche hobbies that people can do, um, not just necessarily the whole scheme of, of a model railway. And, that, and these sorts of brass models are a pretty good example of that. Well, mate, thanks for sharing us. We'll flip back cameras and we'll see you a small Yeah, I'll swap cameras. Yeah, sure. There we go. Good to see you back again. Hey, okay. mate, thanks for sharing. Again, thanks for sharing that. And also, we better share with everybody that uh, every week we're doing a um, Jurgen Station, a little two to five minute video um, where you're going to, I don't know, do your builds, show stuff of interest, hints and tips. Um, and really appreciate that, mate, because as you would have noticed from all my episodes, not much into the, tr I've been not, haven't done much on the train side, but having you on on board, so to speak. <laughs> um, it, it, it's a privilege uh, for me and for those who get to witness what you do. So thank you. If I may, Jason, uh, maybe the, the viewers, your subscribers, maybe if there's something they'd specifically like to see, um, they may get bored looking at locomotives. They might want to see how, how it all works. They might want to see some electronics or maybe just some bases, how to get maybe that, you know, that broken model train they have sitting in their cupboard going again. So if, if you like, uh, maybe the, the listeners can, uh, the, the listeners, the viewers it's, can. Um, it's not podcast. Most, most people would switch off when I talk <laughs> anyway. Ah, but um, maybe if the, if the viewers and the subscribers would like to write in and say, I'd like to see X, Y, Z, maybe we can accommodate them somewhere along the line. Mate, I'm sure they will because, yeah, there's a lot of trainees out there and I don't have the knowledge that you do and I'd rather steer them in your direction because um, Thomas the Tank Engine is about my style. Um, yeah. And that's that's the one on the plastic crack. So <laughs> all good. Hey mate, um, is there anything else you'd like to add? No. How about no. that? No. <laughs> that's short and sweet. No, um, okay. Yeah, I, I I think over the next whatever however long we get to go for, which would be great. Um on a personal note to learn more about trains and be able to and have you share with everybody, I'm really looking forward to that. I really thank you for your time today. Um, look forward to the first little video snippet so everybody can have a look at Jurgen Station. And, yeah, we'll keep on keeping on, mate. Terrific. Sounds great. Thank mate, you. Thank, mate, thank you. And as I always say, it's all good and catch you later. See you, guys. Thanks, Jason. Good day again, everyone. Episode one. This is only intended to be a short uh, three or five minute segment on model railways just at the end of it. J um, Jason's channel each week. Um, I thought this week I'd pick a couple of scales and talk about different scales of model railways. I've picked three. You can see three in the picture there. So I might take away these two and start with one remaining. HO scale. The scale is 1 to 87, or more technically 1 to 87.1, but more often presented as 1 to 87. If you said to me today, Jürgen, I want to get started in model railways, how should I go about it? I would send you to HO scale. It's a great compromise in both size, detail, price, plenty of stuff available. Um, the market is immense for HO scale, lots of manufacturer support. And I really can't think of a better way to give model railways a go than starting with some HO scale product. What I'll do with each scale 
I'll hold up a model just so you can get an idea. Roughly how big a HO scale locomotive is. There you go. Anyone who knows me knows I'll buy anything stamped Rio Grande. There you go. What I'll do is I go through each scale. I'll just leave model next to it so you get a bit of an idea. Maybe pop in the end scale track. There we go. End scale. Now, depending on where you live in the world, um, the, scale, the scale will vary. Generally accepted as 1 to 160. Straight away, you can see how much smaller it is. I've got a little locomotive here. I'll just hold up to the camera to give, just to give you an idea, that's all. N-Scale does open up some great opportunities to do a couple of things. Build a nice size layout in a smaller area. And in addition to model large landscapes or vistas with less compression. Perhaps if there was a, a slight con, slight downside to end scale, it would be that as you get smaller now, the track, the trains all need to be kept in good tune. If you're just starting out in the hobby, you may find working HO scale just that little bit easier to get going. So look at the third scale. O scale. As is this straight away, it's such a dramatic difference. I have here an O scale locomotive and it just towers over everything. This is a, a US outline model and the scale on this particular model is one to 48. Those scales do vary, um, but in the US market, generally one to 48 is the accepted scale. Great if you love your detailing. Uh, o scale for many is, I guess, the start of an outdoors adventure. Uh, if you're into garden railways, a lot of people will turn to O scale and larger scales for that. Now, you can't leave these trains out in the weather, but you can leave the track out there. Just turn around a little look there. O scale is very impressive to watch run. Um, it's so large, it's, you know, it's in your face, it's loud, it, it makes all the right noises on the track. Um, watching it roll around, put a train running around is fantastic. What I'll do just before I say goodbye, I'll just take all these tracks away. We'll just line the locos up. There we go. Now, if you've, you've probably worked it out already, I was hoping to find the family, but I couldn't quite locate one of those diesels and end scale. So the little kettle there will have to do. Thanks, everyone. Just a short segment to say good day. Um, if you want to leave a comment or a question in the uh, YouTube, Jason's YouTube channel, they're all appreciated and read. And I'll see you guys next week. Oh, one thing. Icky sticky. I'm an authorised reseller, and this map was a gift. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Wow. Yeah, good, mate. You're just off the charts. How good, folks. Um, please hit the like and subscribe. I mean, just for Jürgen. And if you need to know more about Jürgen and where you can contact him, please um, email me, and we'll go from there. Uh, right out. moving on. Well, here we go, folks. We'll just cut to this. Here's the video for the winner of the 57 Chevy. Bel Air um, with the $50 Outlaw Paints voucher and we'll go to the video and yeah we'll see who won at the end there. Well okay folks here we go it's time for the 57 Chev draw from Les Eccleston fantastic thank you so much Les for donating the kit and not only the kit but the $50 Outlaw Paints voucher we'll paste the link in here We'll patch up these, we won't include my replies. And we've got 26. Let's pick a winner, here we go. Dun, 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 what do we got? Johnny V's Custom Garage Tassie. So that 57 Chev is going down to Tasmania. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations, Johnny V's. I believe I've actually spoken to you lately. So congratulations, mate, and uh, well done. That $50 Outlaw Paints and the 57 Chev is on, to, on its way to you. Mate, please give me a uh, email or a phone call and uh, I'll get back to you. Congratulations, Johnny B. Wow, congratulations, Johnny. Or John, 
Johnny B, mate, well done. Thank you so much for the lovely comment. Um, it is all random, and thank you to everybody who commented on that. I wish I had one to give away to you all for your just unbelievable subscribers, the lot of you. And please, hey, like, comment, share, whatever you do. More comments would be great, guys. Um, thank you very, very much. Okay, right here, moving on. We are heading to Full Ball Models on Wednesday night for the release of the VC Commodore. Um, make sure you stay tuned for that one, folks. Please enjoy that. And we'll be moving on. I've got the parts over just down there. Because I didn't get on to Wednesday night due to health, um, we'll be moving right along. What have we got? The transmission, suspension, oh, suspension, and a, a few other things to go on the HG U, the 1970 HGU. Um, what else have we got? Oh, Greg Ogle. I'll be talking to Greg. We've got a little, um, he was the winner of the mighty HD, U Butte Ute, and the Icky Sticky Pack and the Outlaw Pack. So we've got a little interview with uh, John tomorrow, and I'll be putting that up for uh, Wednesday night's episode as well. Anyway, coming up with Sunday's episode, guys, you'll just have to stay tuned. And as I always say, it's all good, and catch you later.